This is an updated guide to set up a Pi node for 2025. Pi is one of the first projects I got into when I heard about crypto. Over the years, I've expanded my knowledge in crypto and I'm in a lot more projects, but I definitely have a soft spot for this one. After looking at the hundreds and hundreds of comments, I know some people are frustrated setting up a Pi node. Now, it's not the easiest thing to do because it really depends on the type of computer that you're using and the modem or router that you have. The modem and router is going to be the biggest hurdle because you have to forward the ports and make sure they're opened or it will not work. I did a lot of searching and I created this blog post to detail the steps in between because the steps for port forwarding is not that simple. It really depends on the model and brand that you're working with. I'm not part of the Pi team or affiliated with them in any way at all. I'm trying my best to see if I can help the community get their nodes up and running because I have a love for crypto nodes and deep in, and that's what my channel is about. All of this takes a lot of effort. If you don't mind hitting the like button and subscribing, I truly appreciate it. So first off, let's take a look at the minimum requirements. For this guide, you wanna have a Windows 10 or a Windows 11 PC. There's also a version available for Mac. I'll make sure I link that guide down below. For Windows 10 and Windows 11 PCs, you wanna make sure that you have at least four gigs of RAM and you wanna have at least 100 gigs of disk space. The reason why I'm saying at least that is because you're gonna be downloading a copy of the blockchain on your computer and that will grow over time. So you wanna make sure you have enough space for that. I know depending on where you are in the world, you might be using an LTE network or some kind of mobile connection. If you do not have a public IP, this process is gonna fall apart for you. Um, there needs to be a public IP in order for the Pi network to find the node and communicate with it. So you gotta make sure that you do have a public IP. So there's only three real major steps. So step one is gonna to be to download and install Docker. Step two is gonna to be to download and install the Pi Node software. Step three is to make sure that your node can communicate online. That means it can send a signal and receive a signal without being blocked. So if you don't mind hitting the like and subscribe, let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is install the Docker software. This is a free application that you can download from the official site. Again, I'm gonna be linking everything down below. I'm at docker.com. We're gonna select the download option and we're gonna be using the Windows AMD 64-bit version. Go ahead and click on that. It's gonna download onto my computer. The size of the file is 524 megs and we'll go ahead and open it up. Just gonna minimize my browser. And if you get a prompt, you just say yes. The first question is to add a shortcut to the desktop. I'll just leave that checked click on okay, and it's gonna unpack and install the files. Okay, on my computer that actually took a few minutes, uh, installation has succeeded, we'll click on close, and then I'm gonna go ahead and launch Docker by double clicking on it. And we'll get the service agreement that comes up over here. You can view the full terms right over here, and then accept. And I'm gonna be using the recommended settings. If you have some very specific requirements, you can click on use advanced settings and configure it as you want. We'll go ahead and click on finish. At the prompt, you wanna say yes. And now you can go ahead and create an account. You can either put in an email address, use your Google account, GitHub account, or just create a whole new account. I'm just gonna go ahead and just use my Google account. Okay, so I'm signed in right now. We'll go ahead and open back up Docker. And you can complete the survey if you want, or you can skip it. And here we are at the dashboard. So the WSL was already installed for us, which is the subsystem for Linux. Just gonna close this window. And here we are at the main page. We have no containers in right now and no images in right now. So this is a fresh installation. Next up, we're gonna be installing the Pi Node software. Again, this is another free application we're gonna be downloading from the official site. For all the software that we're using, you should not be paying for anything. They're all free downloads. So we're at the mindpi.com website. This is the official website. We wanna go over here to the Pi blockchain and then select Pi Node. And we have two options over here. We have a Mac version and a Windows version. We're gonna go ahead and click on the Windows version. It's gonna download. The file's pretty small. This one is 139 megs. We'll let it download. Okay, so the download is now complete. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that to open it up. I'm gonna minimize my browser and the installation for the Pi Node is beginning. All right, so it looks like there's an update. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the restart now option. It should shut down everything and it's gonna install the update and then reboot the application. All right, so we're at the login screen right now. And what we wanna do is select the login option and it's gonna give us a code. So what we wanna do is sign in through our mobile app and we're gonna enter in this code. I have my app open now. I'm gonna just select the mine option because I haven't done that yet. So we're gonna sign in to, to the node app. What we have to do is go over to the menu up here at the top and select the node option. 
and now we have the sign-in code. So the sign-in code is what I'm going to go ahead and type in XB9KKPHE. Okay, and then I'll say continue. And it looks like the code has been submitted. We'll wait for the desktop to sync up. There we go. The desktop is now in. I'm just going to close my app now. We'll click on dismiss. And you can see I have a group of people over here. Thank you for joining my network. If you're part of the 166 users, we're going to click on the Pi Note option over here. And it says your computer is not running the blockchain. So it's going to download a copy of the blockchain when we turn this on. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And if we jump over into Docker and we go over into containers, you'll see that it is going to start creating a new stack over here. So this Pi Network container, I didn't add this. This was automatically added by the application. So it created its own container right now, and you can see that it is currently running. One thing to keep an eye on is how much RAM it takes and CPU power, depending on your computer and how much you have available, this will get resource intensive. Also, when it downloads a copy of the blockchain, it's gonna take up disk space. So you wanna keep an eye on that. Uh, you can use your computer as normal while allowing Docker to run in the background. Um, but depending on the resources that you have available, you might find it a little bit sluggish and slow. So my computer is now syncing with the blockchain. It's at block number one. Again, this might take hours. Okay, so we're at the main screen right now, and we're going to check this option right over here that's called Visit Tech Setup. So it's going to check a few details. It wants to make sure that your node is operating properly. The first thing is to make sure that Docker is installed. Uh, so Docker is installed correctly, and the Docker daemon is running. We just check that. And now we want to make sure that we have open ports on our router. So we want to make sure that these ports are opened on our router. So you can see that we're not able to check the ports right now because we're downloading a copy of the blockchain and we're running a copy of the blockchain. So we're going to go back over. So what I'll do is since it's downloading a copy, it says the ETA is 240 seconds. I'm going to let that continue before I continue on. Okay, so our node is now synced with the blockchain. That actually didn't take too long. For me, it took about 20 minutes to get that up and running. Um, it really depends on your connectivity and the bandwidth that you have. Let's switch it off. We're going to go back over here. Okay. And then we'll click on check now. So right now it is downloading the port listener and it's now pinging your PC. So you can see that I failed the port check. Nothing is open right now. Now we're going to be doing port forwarding. Port forwarding is going to be probably the most difficult step that we're going to be using. The idea behind this is you want to log into whatever device you have, whether it's a router or a modem. Once you log into it, you want to find a feature or a setting called port forwarding. When you find that port forwarding option, you're going to be selecting it and then putting in the IP address of your computer. Then you're also going to be adding the ports. The ports is going to be 34100 to 34109. For port forwarding and the interest of time, I've created this guide just for port forwarding. It's a general guide that will walk you through the steps to set up your modem or router to allow your PC to communicate on a network. Now, depending on the router or modem that you're using, I've also created this blog post. This blog post has a list of a whole bunch of different models and brands and steps to follow for each individual one. Now, these are the ones that I heard the most about, and I try to include as many as possible. I think I have about 30 there. This was a lot of work. So if there's another model that I'm missing, please link it down in the description below, and I'll take a look at it. And if I can add it, I'll add it to the blog post. So I have all my ports now opened on my router. It recognizes that Docker is installed properly, and the daemon is running. If we go a little bit lower here, we have open ports. And now I'm going to test my ports. It is going to check all these ports to make sure that they're open. Go ahead and click on the button here. And you can see that the status is now open for all the ports. So once again, you have to make sure that you have port forwarding set up on your router to make sure this section is working. Again, I'll make sure I link that in the description below a guide on how you generally set that up. We can go ahead and click on back and we can turn our node back on. Okay. And it says that your computer is running the blockchain and it has a block count right over here. This number will continuously go up and you can see that it is catching up right now. I had this node off for a while. So what it needs to do is it needs to catch up on the blockchain and download all the missing parts. It says it's 14% done. I'll just give it a moment for it to catch up. So it's all caught up. You can see that the local block number and the last block number is the exact same. That means we are fully synced. 
and we have it on. It also says that your computer is running the blockchain and that's pretty much it. So we have the node up and running. Those are all the steps that are required. It says that you're a node candidate. We have not selected super nodes or nodes that can participate in the Pi testnet, which requires KYC passing. You wanna make sure that you have done the KYC for the Pi network and they'll make the selection soon. One other thing I should note is that we wanna leave this up and running. So if you hit the X in the corner, you're not actually closing the application. If you go down here in the corner, you can see that you have it still running. The Pi network is still running over here and the Docker service is running over here. So they are still running in the background. You can use your PC however you choose to. Um, again, depending on the resources like RAM, hard disk space and CPU, uh, you should still be able to use your computer as normal. Um, if it does slow down, it's because Docker is running and it does take a little bit of resources. Okay, so for some quick troubleshooting steps, you wanna make sure, number one, you have a public IP. If you do not have a public IP, this will not work for you. If you have an IP that starts with 172.10.192.168, I'll list a few others down below. These are private IPs. They won't be discoverable out on the internet. Uh, so it won't work. So if you're seeing something like that, that's going to be an issue. You want to make sure that you have access to a public IP. Next up is if you're using a mobile connection, you're more than likely not going to get this to work as well. If you're using something like LTE, you probably have an internal private network. You could follow all these steps and it still won't work. And that's because of the IP issue. Next up is if you have all your ports open and you think that you've done all the steps correctly, just shut down Docker, shut down Docker, shut down the app, maybe even restart your computer and then load them back up. I've had a couple of people let me know in the comments that's all they needed to do. And all of a sudden communication started working. So definitely try that out. I'm going to try my best to keep up with the comments. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a separate comment down below and it's going to say name your router or name your modem. Reply to that comment and just put down your model. And what I'll do is I'll see if I can find the steps for them and then I'll put it in my blog so you can follow those steps. If you're frustrated with Pi, maybe this isn't the project for you, but there is a lot of other projects out there. This channel, CryptoJar, is dedicated to showing a lot of new projects that are coming out and ones that actually earn money right away. So those are listed in my channel. Subscribe if you wanna see more. I also have a bunch of them listed on my blog. If you just go to the main page, you'll see them listed by category. I hope this guide was useful for you. If it was, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.